Hello everyone, my name is Chen Ta. The topic I am going to present today is diamond silicon vacancy. First, let's talk about what is a diamond silicon vacancy. Silicon vacancy center is a kind of color center in diamond, but unlike NV center, which we have learned in the class, silicon vacancy center is one silicon atom replaced to adjacent carbon atoms in diamond lattice and form a split vacancy structure as shown in the figure. As you can see, the silicon atom is able to oscillate along 111 symmetry axis. Just like other current center, uh, SIV center also has two charge states, neutral charge state and negative charge state. Here we just focus on negative charge state because it is regarded as the most promising current center in quantum computing. In addition, it is known that silicon vacancy center is uh, inversion symmetry, so it has narrow inhomogeneous distribution and small spectral diffusion at 4 Kelvin. Let's see the PL measurement result in the left figure. The red line and blue line show the result in room temperature and cryogenic temperature. We can observe most of the fluorescence is concentrated in a VO phonon line at 737 nanometer which contains 70% of the emission. Also, a phonon peak appears at 766 nanometer, which is corresponding to the oscillation of the silicon atom. SIV center's uh, energy diagram is shown in the top right figure. Due to a strong spin of coupling, the center feature to fold optically split, and the spin degenerate ground at the excited state at zero uh, magnetic field, leading to the four line phi structure in the DPO emission spectrum at 737 nm. At a cryogenic temperature, the DPO in the PL spectrum reveals a, a phi structure composed of four transition around 737 uh, nm as shown in the bottom right figure. SIV center can be easily made during the synthesis of CVD diamonds, and it can also be produced by ion implantation. It means the SIV center's position can be determined. Therefore, because the deterministic uh, SIV center's position at a narrow emission bandwidth at room temperature, SIV center is ideal for single photon source applications. In addition, for reasons of the SIV center is almost linear polarized, so that it is suitable for encoding and decoding information by polarization. Other applications are similar to NV center. In 1980, SIV center was first observed in CL investigation of diamond layers and polycrystalline film grown on silicon substrates. They observed a strong light at 737 nm. At that time, some of the researchers uh, assumed this peak is due to GR1 uh, neutral vaccine center, and the others think that uh, that is caused by uh, silicon impurity. In 1993, Tom Fence analysis assured that the light at 737 nm involved uh, uh, silicon impurity. Clark proposed the energy level diagram of SIV center in diamond in 1995. Until 1996, Gauss uh, deduct the uh, silicon split vacancy structure based on self line optical band. In 2014, the electronic structure of SIV center is validated by group theoretical approach and experiment. This profound understanding paved the way for utilizing the SIV center in quantum information applications. In 2016, the entanglement between two SIV centers is created, which is an essential uh, ingredient of quantum networks. In 2017, coherent control of the silicon vacancy spin in diamond is first realized. I will talk about the last three papers later. This figure performs the different color centers emission spectrum. It's obvious that these spectra are broadband. 
The wavelength given for each center denotes the VPL or wavelength. For this part, here shows the VPL position. In this group, the emission is mainly concentrated in the VPL. As you can see, SIBA center has a narrow bandwidth. Also, you may notice that uh, nickel, silicon, and NEA has much narrower bandwidth. And according to other studies, they also show bright and narrow emission. So why we don't use them? First, reports on their lifetime and phonal covering are ambiguous now. Second, creating NEA center remains uh, challenging. Our impregnation and high pressure, high temperature annealing did not yield EA center. And for nickel silicon complex and other nickel related defects, their impregnation efficiency is only 10 to the minus 6, make their use in nanophotonics highly challenging. Now let's move to SIV center's cutting edge status. In this 2014 paper, they show the electronic structure of SIV center, which is elusive before. They model the electronic state and have a good agreement with experiment results. In their experiment, there are two samples, single crystal thin diamond film, which contain a large ensemble of SIV defects. And another one is a single SIV center in high purity bulk diamond, as we can predict. There are four peaks referred to the four transition which we are mentioned before. The red light represents the simulation result using the model. Here our polarization analysis is shown here. The polarization of the fine structure lights can be grouped into two subsets. The inner transition are uh, polarized parallel to each other and perpendicular to outer ones. This shows the counter counterpart of special phi structure splitting as a function of a prime magnetic field. Phi solid light are calculated transitions. This is the calculate splitting uh, of electronic levels. Ground and excited states level according to the letters and numbers at the right of the panel. Optical transition between all levels indicated by black arrows and correspond to the white solid line in the, this picture. This figure shows the typical excitation spectrum for a pump laser scan across transition D1 and the second pump laser was applied resonant to D2. This kind of transition is called long type transition. This transition causes coherent population trapping producing the sharp dip in the spectrum. This figure shows the excitation spectrum for SIV centers containing the silicon-29 isotope. This double A arises due to the hyperfine interaction with silicon-29 nuclear spin. The two possible land type transition is shown here. Uh, this observation of Silicon 29 uh, hyperfine splitting in SIV center rise the possibility of uh, arterial access to nuclear spin, which should have much longer coherence time than uh, electron spin. This is the first evidence of uh, hyperfine interaction with a silicon 29 nuclear spin in SIV center. So it means the SIV center can potentially be used as a memory qubit. In this 2016 paper, they used Raman transition between the metastable orbital states of SIV centers. When a single SIV center is excited from the state U by a driving laser with a detuning of delta, the emission spectrum includes a, a spontaneous component at frequency mu EC and the Raman component at frequency mu EC minus delta. They show the Raman emission frequency and bandwidth can be manipulated by choosing the frequency and the uh, intensity of the driving lasers. For two independent emitters in state U, each SIV center scatter the uh, Raman photons to the waveguide at a rate gamma d. When the Raman transition of the two SIV centers are tuned into resonance with each other, 
it is fundamentally impossible to distinguish, distinguish which of the two emitters produce a waveguide photo. Therefore, detection of an indistinguishable uh, single photon leaves the two SIV centers prepared in the entanglement state B. And here the phi is set by the propagation phase uh, between two, uh, two emitters spaced by delta L and the relative phase of driving lasers. If the Raman transition of two SIV centers are not tuned into resonance, the photons are distinguishable, and the detection of first photon prepare the system in a statical uh, mixture of state UC and CU. After the first photon detection, this state uh, scatter photons at, at a single emitter rate of uh, gamma 1d, resulting in the autocorrelation g equals to 0 0.63 which is close to the conventional limit associated with two uh, single photon emitters. Alternatively, uh, if the Raman transition of two SIV centers are tuned into the resonance with each other, a normal superradiant feature is observed in photon correlation around zero time delay with g equals to 0 0.19a. Uh, and this means the entanglement is realized. In 2017, first realization of coherent control of the SIV center electron uh, spin is performed. A dial laser drive transition from 1 to D and then the state D shows phase decay to A and B. Finally, they measure the transition showing the gray solid line. They use two poles to initialize and reorder the spin up population. And it shows spin relaxation time 350 plus minus 11 nanoseconds. In order to address spin of the SIV center, they apply a microwave pulse between the optical initialization and real pulse. Due to the nucleus spin one half of the silicon 29 uh, isotope. Each electron spin state display a hyperfine splitting. The microwave field uh, drives the electron spin while preserving the nuclear spin state, which cause two distinct uh, microwave resonance frequency, the green arrow and the orange arrow, leading to two peaks in the spectrum. Now, fix the frequency of the microwave at one of the resonance frequencies with a varying uh, duration tau. Also, this pulse is applied between the initialization and real pulse. Here, we can see the Rabi oscillation for the green arrow and the each inset uh, shows the Rabi oscillation for the orange arrow. So, the coherent control of the Spin uh, is realized. Since the coherence tight C2 star is limited by optical relaxation that arise from single phonon process, for temperature below 2 Kelvin, the reduced phonon occupation results in a suppression of the uh, optical relaxation from the lower branch of the ground state. Using the lower branch state as qubit will then enable long life spin coherence. Also, periodic uh, nanostructure on diamond may realize a complex phononic band gap at the phonon transition frequency to increase the spin coherence time. An alternative uh, approach consists in splitting the optical branch further apart by applying strength to the SIV center to increase the energy required for phonon to cause the coherence. Since many nanophotonic devices require thin membranes, uh, stability of SIV center emitter in close to surface and uh, the effect of different surface terminations must be studied in more details. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, thank you for your listening.